Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's OdaFest podcast episode. I'm here with Jay and Angelo and Dio. Yay! Hello, hello, That's hello. That's me. Before we move on, we have a very heavy announcement that we need to make. Uh, back in March, we made the difficult decision to postpone OdaFest until May 2021 in the hopes that the COVID-19 global pandemic would be behind us. As we enter into the 2021 festival planning cycle, it is with a very heavy heart that we announce that OdaFest 2021 will be canceled. As a not-for-profit, volunteer-based organization, our volunteer staff members require a significant amount of time to organize and put on the festival that you all know and love. With the current AHS restrictions not yet permitting major festivals, concerts, large conferences, and events from taking place, and an unknown amount of time around when such events will be allowed, we aren't confident that we'll be able to safely put on the same caliber of event that our community has come to expect. So to this end... Refunds will be issued to all ticket holders of OdaFest 2020 and 2021. Um, service fees are unfortunately non-refundable. If it's not a hardship to you, we kindly request that you consider donating the cost of your OdaFest ticket towards us. Every dollar of your donation will go directly into making OdaFest happen in future years. Please note that you must actively opt in to donating your ticket by going to odafest.com slash donate by November 30th, 2020. Artist tables and exhibitor booths will also be automatically refunded by the end of January 2021. Thank you so much for your patience as we work with our partners to issue the refunds. We intend for everything to be issued by the end of January 2021. Uh, yeah, so that's definitely crappy for us. Crappy yeah, for the community. Yeah, feels bad. Uh, I just want to make it clear in case it wasn't the most, uh, like, like because obviously it's a bit of a wordy announcement. The refunds are automatic unless you have a debit or cash payment, in which case you do need to contact us because it's hard, uh, there's no automatic function through our um, sort of ticket purchase system that we used. So, but we absolutely, we, we're not just trying to take your money. There's no, I don't believe like the November 30th clause for like the donation comes into effect or anything like that. We are basically, we're, we're happy to refund you. If you happen to want to support us with a ticket that you bought from like the previous year and everything like that, only then if you go through odafest.com slash donate, that's the only way we would be taking in that donation. Every other scenario, literally every other scenario other than you going to donate is to get your money back. There's no gray area about that. So, yeah. 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 Yeah, all things it's considered, when I was reading this announcement, that is uh, definitely the most consumer-friendly way of going about it. It's it's what we it's what we had to ask is essentially like the under, for everyone to understand what is exactly. happening, um, and in some ways, um, because I'm sure it's just what everybody should know that we're not for, not for profit, we're a complete non profit, we're a complete volunteer based organization. So thank God we don't have salaries to be paying this during this time because if you did. Um, they're facing even harder decisions, uh, and that's why you're going to be seeing events uh, probably in the next uh, six months to a year, even if things have not settled down or become any safer or any restrictions have been lifted for their respective jurisdictions, is that they will try to be going for, like onwards with their plans because they just have to find a way to survive, whereas we, I'm not going to say anything about our finances or anything like that. I'm just saying that we have it just a tiny little bit easier, even though we have a lot of things to consider decision-wise, and we will be making those with the community's best interest in mind, always. Anyway, aside from that, hello, Dio. Let's get on to Welcome back. Cool. Hello, Angelo hello. and Nancy. How is everyone hello. doing? I had a fantastic day. That's good. Yeah, I'm happy. Like the the Oda Fest news is the worst part of my day. Mm -hmm. I mean, I I would certainly hope so. <laughs> yeah, you, know, you hope that there's no worse. You know, news. hope that there's not some like follow up news that's worse than that. Absolutely. Ideally, I lost my arm and 
and my cat left me, and and my dog burned down the house, but but the Oda Fest news was certainly the worst part of the day. <laughs> <laughs> but what's the good news? You have to tell us about the good news. So, so the good news requires uh, a lot of backstory. We like backstory. We like narratives. So, way back in the year 1975, my my nono's uncle tough. So my nono's uncle bought this tiny little yellow bike made for tiny little French girls, and uh, it ran for a hell of a long time. And then somewhere around the year 1997. Uh, it was no longer registered and insured and had not been run <laughs> since then. Bureaucracies. God damn it. The intention, the original intention was when I turned 16, this bike would become mine and I could drive it to school or college or because you, wherever the hell I felt like. You are a little French girl. Like exactly. a trendy French girl. Hell yeah. yeah. Je suis le belle fille française. <laughs> Oh now, my. the year came around. It was about when I was actually 14 or 15 that my my dad and I went to try and make this bike run. And we just couldn't. We couldn't get any signs of life out of it. And so the bike is called a Matobacane Caddy. It is a little 50cc moped so that's like it's a bike with pedals and a and a small motor on it mm -hmm. and uh even under best circumstances it should get maybe 35 kilometers an hour it's not a fast bike but it was kind of disappointing that we we couldn't get it running and uh looking at things trying to figure it out my dad back in the day came to the conclusion that it was uh the carburetor that was the problem. The carburetor is the part that that takes air and uh, fuel and mixes them together and sends it off to the uh, to the cylinder to get blown up. Mm -hmm. And so, with that not working, normally a carburetor isn't that big of a deal. They're not an expensive part. They're not a complicated part. It shouldn't be the end of things. But because of this bike was such a weird design uh in the world of motors french motor design and french vehicle design is generally considered kind of oddball stuff mm -hmm. and so with this one they put the the intake for the air right beside the exhaust and then it wraps around the whole freaking engine to go to this one spot that's really cramped so most carburetors don't fit. The The intake is really small. So even if you find a carburetor that fits into there, making it fit on the intake is a huge pain. Right. And so for 18 years, this, this uh, moped just sat in a garage collecting dust, doing nothing. And... So, earlier this year, long-term listeners might remember that I was uh, building myself an electric bike. And that was mm -hmm. great. I still, I still have the bike. It's, it's wonderful. But while doing that, I got the idea of, yeah, an electric bike is great, but I want to go faster than an electric bike. I want, <laughs> I want an electric scooter, too. And so I was it thinking begins. about things, and I was like, yeah, this is what I would have to do. I could, if I wanted to, like weld a frame and everything like th these are the rules that i would have to follow and then i'd have to get a vin number for it and i'd have to get registered and all this that and the other thing and uh it would have been a huge cost and then i was talking to my dad one day and he's like well well why don't you get the caddy and strap an electric motor to that it's already got the vin and everything so all the bureaucracy is all taken care of bureaucracy and i mean you don't have to fucking make the thing. You just have to bolt the shit on. <laughs> and so I I thought about that for a hell of a long time. And after doing more research, well, converting it to electric it is going to be around $2,500 to do it right. To get it running 
would have been in the range of a hundred or two hundred dollars. Mm-hmm. And so, last week I finally, I finally bit the bullet, and I shipped this this tiny little yellow French bike all the way from the the wastelands of Ontario. Three thousand kilometers by truck it traveled to the wastelands of Alberta. We we have a lot of wastelands Barda. in Canada. It's true. Barda. And uh, it got here. I took a look. I ordered a few parts because I just needed the fuel valve for it, the fuel line. And uh, my dad actually did track down a carburetor that might work for it in Italy uh, 15 years ago. Mm-hmm. He just wow. never got around to attaching it. And so today, I finally had the free time. I used the plastic from a Coke bottle to shim this carburetor onto the intake. Just I, I had to make it have a tight fit, and a Coke bottle is what did the did the do. And I went out and got some two-stroke oil and some fuel, and I poured it into the gas tank. And within four minutes, that bike was buzzing like a horde of angry bees. And it filled bees. me with joy. Bees. At least it's angry bees and not wasps. Brrr. It, it's not bad enough. But it's bleh. it's not badass enough to be wasps. It's bees. <laughs> hey, bees are awesome. So is the plan to actually keep it, or are you going to sell it? Oh fuck no! I'm not selling it. Mm. I am keeping it. I intend to make it fully working, fully runnable. In the uh, summertime, there's still some tuning that I have to do, but I intend it to be a fully running moped come spring. And if I find the value in it, I still intend to maybe do an electric conversion. Mm-hmm. Hmm. What's and the... it's a shame that you managed to put it all together in time for it to be full on winter outside, though. Well, mm-hmm. the thing is, I didn't even ship it before winter started, right? Right. Still, though, shame on the timing. But hey, come spring, it'll be ready to go. If there exactly. is a spring, if there's even a next year. Well, I mean, we're still dealing with uh, the effects of September 1995. But uh, all things considered, I think that having a second 2020 is just off the table at this point. Mm, fair enough. Fair enough. Presumptuous of you, but you never know. <laughs> but no, it sounds cool. I'd like to I'd like to see it one day. Just little. Does it uh what's the what's the engine capacity? What's the So it what's is forty nine point nine CC. Ooh. Wow. What Why a... the point nine? Why not fifty? Uh because in some jurisdictions, fifty and over yeah. needs a special license. Mm-hmm. Oh, that makes Depending sense. Depending on where it's Whereas... from and everything like that, if the original sort of Let's say it, like you know, it's from France or whatever, and and probably some area, some some legislation says that if a vehicle is a certain engine capacity, then it's going to need, you know, a certain license or some other sort of reg- registration for it to exist, other than just being a recreational type of vehicle. Exactly. What's what's the top speed on it? Uh, so for this one, it's actually a fairly wimpy engine on it. Of course. Uh, if everything was in perfect working order, it should get up to just over 30 kilometers an hour. Wow. Nice. You could be illegal in school zones. I could. <laughs> just barely. Not to say that uh, he's not already illegal in school zones. <laughs> wow! We're gonna have to edit that. I'll have you know <laughs> that, that I am perfectly legal in school zones. <laughs> We're gonna have to edit uh, that. <laughs> yeah. Who do you gonna, think gonna I am, Vic Mignogna? <laughs> <laughs> Get it anyway. out while you can. Ugh. <laughs> so it does go faster than your uh, your electric bike uh, experiment from earlier this summer. Oh, good God, no! Really? No. Really? My electric bike goes up to forty-five kilometers yeah. an hour. That Which, technically oh, speaking, is illegal. Uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but a lot of I, that's not special. Like, it's not special in the sense that, like, bicyclists with even without engines can 
outspeed in certain areas that they really shouldn't oh, yeah. be. So biking like, over thirty kilometers an hour without an e-bike is easy enough. It's something yep. you can do. And uh, again, potentially illegal. But uh, but even with my e-bike as it is, I can go faster than the legal limit, which is thirty-two kilometers an hour for uh, e-bikes. Mm-hmm. I can restrict that down if anyone ever bothers me about it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but having that said, because it has a combustion engine. This moped, even though it has pedals, even though it is like a bicycle and a motor vehicle, it cannot go on the bike paths here in Calgary. It is a road only vehicle. Mm-hmm. And if I wanted to, I could use it as a dirt bike or something, but it's not powerful enough for that. Does that mean if you like take it downtown, for example, and you got to run some errands or you're just like just doing a little thing? Does that mean you're going to have to lock it? Oh, like, hell yeah. Is it is it fairly easy to steal? <laughs> Yes, it's only like a hundred pounds. Oh yeah, you're oh, gonna. Wow, that's hilarious. Someone like, could pick it up. Yo, and lock I gotta away go. With it. I gotta lock my. <laughs> I gotta lock my motorbike. Your yeah. bike weighs as much as me. Oh yeah. What? Well, I mean, most motorcycles are in the five hundred pound range. Mm-hmm. Fair, fair, but wow. But yeah, that sounds. Uh, that sounds fun. I. Hope that when summer, summer, spring comes it. around or whatever, like, you know, just like have my, buzz my by. whole intention for this bike is on days where I really don't want to go to work. Uh, I'm just going to roll slowly towards work at 30 kilometers an hour on the back roads. I'm going to use it to get like mm-hmm. the late night uh, snack runs, the late night beer runs. Things like that. Mm-hmm. And occasionally just cruising around, enjoying being on like some some horde of angry bees that are somehow turning <laughs> wheels. Mm-hmm. Ride the bees. Ride the bees. <laughs> <laughs> I'll drag race Dio's Camaro. Uh, and, uh, I do believe you will um, lose, sir. Uh, I'm very a mechanic. Sorely. I say who wins. <laughs> You'll also be eating a whole lot of exhaust. Mm-hmm. Oh man! Oh Dio. yeah, Dio will be eating so much exhaust. Have you guys? Have uh, you guys no. had a little ride around yet? Because the weather was pretty okay today. That's the thing. There's still some uh, some tuning that I have to do with it. Right. So right now, I did try to ride it. I did try to ride it. Uh, it doesn't idle if I let the throttle go all the way. It, it just, just like slowly yeah. stops running. Hmm. Which is bad. Mm-hmm. Uh, but when I tried to actually ride it, when you put a load down on it, even at full throttle, it got up to maybe five kilometers an hour. <laughs> That's still fun. Ooh, That's and still then like, it, ch- it just choked out. It died funny. after about uh, like 30 feet, like right. 10 seconds. <laughs> 30 feet. Oh, man. Uh, you know. So Super useful. there's some work to do. I think I just need a tighter fit on the uh, carburetor right? to make it work. In the meantime, no one's going to be stealing it and trying to get away with it. With They're it not on. getting very far, at least yeah, not. Yeah, they'd have to just pick motor. it up and just carry it away. And with how hard it is to pedal, uh, oh. honestly, they would be better to just like carry it, walk with it, yeah. carry it. That's funny. Wow. Because I was going to ask if Dio had ridden on it, but obviously you've answered that as well. Nope. But, but I did look not. at it. Mm-hmm. She'll ride it, it eventually. Very pretty. She'll get to see what it's like. It'll be mm-hmm. cool. I've always wanted I'm a road. I'm excited to I've hear more progress about it. Really? Dio's definitely like the size of rider it was intended for. Uh, yeah. yeah. I, I, when I first saw Angelo on it, especially where the default like seat position was, mm-hmm. he looked like it looked like he was clown carring the poor thing. <laughs> <laughs> he literally looked like a a big man on a tricycle, and I was just like, huh. Mm-hmm. But I've, I've, yeah. Do his feet even fit on the pedals? Barely. Like, wow. It, 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 I'm like I'm like low key jealous because even though it's not something that I would necessarily want to own a ride specifically, like I've always wanted a road bike of my own, like uh, sort of like a maybe like an Indian motorcycle or a Honda or some okay, sort for of like the last like three or four years. Thing. I've been looking on Kijiji at motorcycles. Yeah. And you can find really interesting, decent motorcycles right. for anywhere from like 1500 up to 3500 Right. 
Like it's not expensive Angelo, to get into motorcycles. Let's start a let, let's let's start our own bike gang. Yes, Odafest bike gang. Hell yeah! <laughs> Spreading wholesomeness and teddy bears wherever we go. Hell and, no! And anime. <laughs> <laughs> and anime. <laughs> and gaming. Garuga mesh. And, and waifus. And waifus. So many Dude. waifus. We love waifus. Mm. If this thing wasn't like right now, all the parts are original, mm-hmm. so I don't want to go too crazy like weaving it up. Uh, maybe <laughs> I... I'll sticker bang a uh, a helmet or something. Oh yeah! But if I do end up electrifying it, if I do, I want to get some like some spare fairings for it, like the the like, side skirts and stuff, and then I'll just like just almost like Itasha this moped. <laughs> what does that mean? Itasha? That that those are like those anime weep cars. Is oh oh I didn't know that. Like I mean obviously I should have figured that there was a type of name for that. But yeah, okay, it's like yeah, it's a ricer or a tuner with anime decals, anime girl decals, waifu decals, whatever. Yeah. Like the Miku car. Right. Those those full anime wraps, they're awesome. It's funny because oh, I actually uh not that anyone cares. But I actually have one of those in GTA V. Nice. I have nice. a. Who's the waifu on it? Yeah. Uh, there's like an in-game waifu that they actually have in universe. Her name is like Princess Robot Bubblegum. Okay. <laughs> uh, I would. Oh, I'll take. I'll take a picture one day and show you guys. It's, <laughs> I've I've customized the name. Uh, the 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 license plate and it reads Kawaii. Uh, oh. the vehicle, the, like obviously oh in GTA Five, like there's no um official car brands, but they obviously like take from a lot of vehicles, so it's sort of a mix of between like a Subaru and a Toyota, I think it is sort of like a look. And okay, yeah, I don't know. It's just got I was just like all the other cars. I have like a I have a several garages, and they have like nice cars on them. But I was just like. I want like a Japanese uh, tuner style vehicle, which I made, and it was it, it actually drives really well in the game. And then I was just like, oh, interesting, because you can't customize every car the same way. So this particular car just happened to have uh, like waifu decals, and I was just like, you know what? Screw it. Like I'm just gonna have one that's like extremely gaudy. It's got like pink wheels. It's got like uh, it's got <laughs> it's got pink and purple um, neon underglow and everything like that. Like. It is wow. Hey man, undercarriage glow. I haven't seen that in a while. Yeah, that's that's kind of old school. I was like, I'm going, I'm going. Oh. Uh, the Tokyo mid-to- Drift. Yeah, mid two thousands with this with this whole look. Yeah, so. yeah, nice. But anyway, yeah, that's that's my only relation I have to that. I do. I didn't know there was a term before that, but I should have. Yes, that's there, funny. there's a subreddit for it and. There's some, oh, God. there's some great stuff on there. I'm, sure I'm going to go surf that subreddit after this just, just to get my fix. Mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. Part of me, the, the dangerous thing about that subreddit is it makes you want to do it to your car. <laughs> there, <laughs> there has been multiple times where I've tried to tell Dio right. that we should make the Camaro into Natasha. And I have to be the voice of reason and just be like, no, no, we're not doing it. No. Yeah, but you're only saying and that because he's that. suggesting waifus when you want husbandos. No, I just I I I'm not I'm not down to put my power level on full display. I'm not doing it. You were, Even if you it was one. your own VTuber avatar? Nope, not doing it. Not my power no? level in public. Mm, 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 what mm, if you became but that super avatar is adorable? I, I it, it lives on the I mean it is very <laughs> cute. I I it do so love cute. it. It is very cute. But my power level has to be hidden somewhere. It's true. And uh-huh. the car is one of those places. But my VTuber it avatar, made me want to cute. make my Pontiac G5 the lamest, most, the oh. best, weebiest G5, Ew. but also the lamest, most horrible I just want to, th- like, I honestly, <laughs> like, I want to throw up in my mouth a little bit, just thinking. I knew you were going to say that. Like a Pontiac. Oh. With uh, any sort of weeb rap. Oh, God. Yeah. I'm trying to think of some like super not suitable cars for this little project of yours, and I'm thinking of some like quite a few Pontiacs right now. You know what you should do? You know what? Okay, okay. You Part know how? No, no, hold on, hold on. Let's get a listen, Pontiac Fiero listen, just to do listen. this for it. You know how people? Some people like uh, buy a house to flip it. Like they just you know do a little quick thing, and they're yes. like, hey, you oh, know, no. just buy, go out, buy like a fi- like like a 1500 beater. 
you know, just like it, like it costs you almost nothing, and then get like the anime waifu wrap, and then put it back out in the market for, like at double the price. Oh my god! <laughs> just do it. Just <laughs> Yo, like start. You pick no, the- no. What I'm telling you is start flooding like our local city with. Like car used vehicles that have anime like waifu wraps. <laughs> okay, I got a proposition for you. The problem is the you'll non, never make your money back. <laughs> the non SC Focus, a Ford Focus with waifus all over it. Oh my god, that's cursed. No, I oh, think a Pontiac, it's so cursed. A Pontiac is still worse. Like, I, like I have, I would. Oh, you know what would be great? It would be like you know how Calgary's always full of like trucks. You just get like a big Ram thirty five hundred or like. Ugh. Ford F three fifty. There, like one of the there big are multiple boys. Itasha trucks on the Itasha subreddit. Oh, I'm sure, but like <laughs> you have to also combine it with like the Alberta sensibilities of like jacking it up and like you know making it into the oil rig douchebag sort of you know. Uh, Wait, if you put if you put truck nuts truck on balls. a truck yep. with Estolfo, uh Itasha, does that make it illegal? Is it like super? Mm-hmm. Like no, it would be canonic, but but suddenly that like almost makes it pornographic. Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, I don't know. Hold on, oh. I uh, I know we're recording, but I just booted up GTA Five. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to take a screenshot. I'm just gonna call my car and we're gonna do a screenshot. But anyways, uh, yeah, actually, so speaking of uh, waifus, anime girls, sort of the related thing. Uh, Dio, tell me about your, your your VTuber avatar. Yes. Because I haven't actually, I think I've only seen it once so far. Yes. So, I I, I think the last time I was on the podcast, I think I did bre- briefly mention what VTubing mm-hmm. was. Yes. And, and how it's kind of blowed up, as the, the kids these days say given the, the kids these days given the uh world My health situation is to bow up mm-hmm. and pretend like i don't know nobody <laughs> <laughs> i love that that video i still. love that um but yeah vtubing has become very popular and i was like listen i'm a cosplayer right so i'm very good at pretending to be my waifu wise self in real life so Good. why can't I also be my waifu I self online? And the Gasp. technology is now here. I... So I was I was kind of interested in it and I was poking around various different artists people to see, you know, what their rates for. And I offhandedly asked a friend of mine who lives in the city who does art. Um she doesn't typically do commissions, but she likes drawing her friends. Like she will draw. She's not motivated to draw unless it's like someone she cares about, like original right. character, which is like a very weird specific problem. But I was like, Hey, would you do a commission of my OC and we could turn it into a VTuber? And she was like, yeah. So we did that. And Angelo has done um, rigging before he's rigged his own VTuber model. So I was like, Angelo, you rig my model. So we did that, and I have been uh, been testing it and testing it with the goal of like making my VTuber debut, so to speak, uh, in mm-hmm, the new mm-hmm. year. Um, and it's been very fun to like get to be an anime girl mm-hmm. and watch my little anime mouth move, right? And be like, "Wow, that's me!" And that that's me. And uh, it's already had a great meme potential. And I'm like, this is maybe a little bit too much power for me. As a, someone who is already an avid memer, I now have the uh, ability to make instant anime girl memes. Right. And I love this power. But the the internet is not ready for this. But I'm ready for this. But I- Doesn't matter if the internet's are you, not ready, Dio. Yeah, you are, know this. Are you planning to like go VTuber like sort of full-time when you're streaming? Or... Is it just like a VTuber so, Wednesdays or something? N- not quite. So my plan is whenever I don't feel like using a webcam, which right. is disturbingly often, I will use Same. the the VTuber model. Right. Um, because it's nice because it means there's still that level of interactivity where like you can see a person mm-hmm, in their mm-hmm. facial expressions. It's just that they're an anime person. Um. 
and there is that level of interactivity which i really like right. um Especially when I'm doing like cosplay streams, because I have been doing cosplay streams, at least one cosplay stream every single week on sure. stream. Um, and that means that my cameras are usually focused on what I'm making. So it's really annoying to then have to have, you know, a dedicated camera on my face that I then have to reposition every time I move. Right. Blah, blah, blah. With a VTuber model, even if I'm like out of frame of the camera, there's at least a static image that's breathing. Like there's sure. still mm -hmm. something. Um, which which I like. Um, but I know like traditionally, so a traditional like stereotypical VTuber is not quite the path that I'm going on. But, it, right. y you know, it, it, it does have like VTubers typically have like rules where it's like they're a character or right. they're... Um, their avatar has lore and like you don't know what they look like in real life right and you right. don't know their real name i'm not committed to any of that stuff i right. at the end of the day you don't want to rebrand you're not trying to become something you're not you just it's a feature yeah exactly it's a right. it's a you already had the 3d dio fest experience now you get the 2d dio fest experience also mm-hmm which is I like this. very exciting and fun for me. So I I love it. Um, so far, my audience is very into it and loves it. So right. everybody is winning here. Like, I'm having the time of my life being an anime girl. Um, I was very lucky in that um, my artist, Kiro, drew lots of accessories. So right. I now have to motivate Angelo before our cubism trial runs out to finish rigging them all. Right. Oh my. Is that sort of like is is that almost like a dress up kind of? Like it's the way that it works is basically like uh, paper dolling, right? Where mm -hmm. you're just you've got things on top of other things, right? And then with Live 2D, all it does is it like moves them around, squishes them, stretches them. Right. Uh, you can add physics, which is really cool. The physics add a ton of life to it. Sure. But that's. At the end of the day, that's really all it is. You're just sliding images around on top of each other. Cool, cool. Can that is a really cute pre-stream idea, though, Dio. Like, the whole get ready with me. Should I wear these earrings? Should I wear this? Right? Like, it's fun. So cute. Um, uh, we've already uh, decided to uh, do a chat redeem. So mm -hmm. Twitch has chat redeems that I use. Um, peop I have cat ears. I have cat ears that can be t t taken on and off. Uh Right, so right. of course you do. Neko Mimi mode is 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 an option. The animation for the cat ears popping out is the cutest shit ever. And it's the so adorable. It. They Question, just like though, burr, like pop out. It's so cute. Is is this only usable on Twitch, or can you use it for like? No. no. Oh God, no. Um, cool. So you can like so you can for, hop in on like context, an Odafa Zoom meeting and be like. Yeah, hey, I can turn hey gamers, and then just like yeah. pop in. Oh yeah, I've used That'd it in Discord already. Yeah. Um, it, it it functions like a virtual camera. So anywhere you could use a camera, you can use your VTuber avatar. Right. Very cool. very cool. So most VTuber software, you can install a virtual webcam through it. Mm -hmm. So your VTuber software is just another drop down in your webcam list. Right. But what's really cool is OBS has done that now, where OBS installs its own virtual camera. Mm -hmm. So you can have all your OBS oh, effects and everything as a webcam. I mean, if you I'm really not. I'm to. probably mm -hmm. not going to mm -hmm. drop it any Zoom calls with intense. OBS anytime right. soon. But that's like it, cool. It offers a ton of options. Ah, no idea, but I could. Yeah, oh, but you could. Tubing. The option is available this is, to this you. This is an open road yeah. for you me, can isn't it? Do that now. It really is like your mom told you you could be anything as a kid. You could grow up to be anything. So why not become an anime girl? Right? But no, that's super that's actually really super interesting. I I could I definitely understand like the appeal to it cuz like there's always an appeal I think in general on the internet to have a certain if you start your brand off like this especially to have a certain uh anonymity about your person. But while you're allowed to play a character as you're supposed to present it to the public, there's always like an appeal to it, whether you're like on a forum or you're VTubing, I think, or anything like that. So like this is and just an extension the possibilities. of possibilities, in my opinion. Very but, strongly yeah. considering. 
it really is just like a an expanded way to like interact with audiences in a new way and right. weebs love it bro if you're a weeb how happy are you to see an Sign anime girl up. talking to commissioning you commissioning angelo for some rigging later i feel like uh i feel like vtubers have exploded in, over the por- the course of this year probably just because like there hasn't been that much anime this year oh that makes so much sense the weebs drought. are starved starved for decent content right and then so suddenly it's like wait a minute you've got you've got all these great vtubers like like project melody Mm -hmm. and uh and like well of course there's the hollow live girls uh the english hollow live girls like uh amelia watson uh ina uh gargura holy (laughs) shit gura is such a fucking adorable shark i love her uh, Do you just call her uh, an adorable Maury shark? Calliope. That's what she, she is. is. She's an adorable little shark. Sure, I'm not saying no. I'm just saying I need clarity. She, she, she just like she That's stares into your soul. Okay. Shh. Uh, <laughs> I'm not judging. I just don't know. I love. I just want to because the world, because like the, this realm is not like it's not necessarily foreign to me, but it's like anything's a possibility i need to make sure you're saying the words that i think you're saying because they could be anything they could literally be anything it's true i i don't know if there's a vending machine vtuber yet but it's just horrible ideas right yes yes why no don't worry about it why why don't worry about it. why i mean yeah it's fine you have a husband don't forget that (laughs) Mm-hmm. But her VTuber character might not. Oh man, hey, we're gonna go I, down some I don't want to get. I don't want to go here, there. Let's not. <laughs> oh, let's not go there. Not quite that far. Okay, hold on. I think I, I I finished taking some screenshots of my car, so I'll be uploading sh- those shortly to the Discord. No, not at all. I'm so clearly excited. I'm not distracted at all. Not not even a little so bit. No, completely. And utterly focused. Oh, man. Absolute focus. View online. So, so Nancy, if you were to become a VTuber, an anime girl, would you become one of those fancy, the, the fancy schmancy 2D VTubers? Or would you be like the... the that depends the on which one is more fun VTubers. with face rigging. Well, personally, personally, I like the 2D ones because whenever I try to do anything with 3D, my brain just starts melting. <laughs> like I I can make a moped run. I can slide around 2D images. Uh I can draw pixel art, but as soon as there's a third dimension. But the bike has three my dimensions. Brain the just... bike is a real thing. I like 2D. Come the, on. 2D waifus are adorable. Okay. <laughs> just in case you didn't know. 2D waifus are the way. I, I really love the look of the 2D ones, and I feel like there's a lot more variety. But at the same time, I feel like there's more that you can do with the 3D models. Yeah, there's, but it's yeah, a- I, there's definitely limitations with a 2D model, right? Sure. Because anytime, anytime you you want to change something, you have to re-rig it. If you want to add a new costume, it has to be redrawn and re-rigged. If right. you have a, a 3D avatar, like assuming your 3D model is rigged and and is ready to go, you can take any asset that exists and put it on the model as long as you're willing to scale it right and but you get a lot of visual diversity with 2d ones because they are each unique to the artist right that draws them i i think there's also like this idea that um with it, it it has to do with like sort of uh visual design especially in uh gaming is that like 3d unless it's done extremely well, never ages so well. Whereas if you go 2D, you can almost guarantee that you'll probably have a, a classic sort of appeal to it. Like it, It'll it, age it, better. It, it has longer legs. It'll mm-hmm. go, it'll last longer. Yeah. It'll, it, it'll age better. That's a big thing about it. Um, Definitely. You know, in case VODs are a big thing for you, but no one uh, has VODs any on, on Twitch anymore for yeah. some reason. It's real weird. Uh, I know nothing. <laughs> Me, I don't know. I don't know. Whoa, there's weird. my there's my I Tasha card. Blame 
me. But yeah. Oh. I'll just blame the recording agency. Oh. Usually you can re blame them for everything. Mm -hmm. Like once, one time I walked out back, uh, back of my uh, yard. I went to my car mm -hmm. and there was like garbage thrown all over the place. And it looked like animals had gotten into the garbage can. And I was just like, <laughs> oh, the RIAA is going to pay for this one. Huh. Okay. Because you can just blame them for everything. It's probably their fault. Uh huh. Pretty sure, I'm sure it's that's not, exactly but, how that you know. works. <laughs> it is. I mean, no, the that's blame exactly game how that works. So All right. You can blame if them. If we're for talking everything. about like <laughs> mm -hmm. reasonability, no, no, wise? it can go very far when it goes to the RIAA. They have their. <laughs> they have their. No, you can just throw lawsuits of any kind. They'll stick keep, uh, as long as you keep try. Serving oh, yeah. those you have the money. Until something sticks. Someone will try. Exactly. <sighs> That's what I've learned. Nothing at all. <laughs> That's not in reference Nothing to anything at else all. at all. Nothing at all. Nothing at all. Um, Nothing so at Angela, all. speaking of having a third dimension, my 3D printer's been doing some weird shit this week. Mm -hmm. So 3D printers are not exceptionally complicated in like how smart they are so when you they're okay so they're they're really not like they're they're kind I of just they're like not. dumb machines that just follow instructions without really verifying that the yeah. instructions make sense stupid machines <laughs> stupid machines okay, so following for a little bit of context for anyone who is not familiar with 3d printers uh -huh. 3d printers uh basically operate off of a set of compiled instructions. These instructions are usually put together by an application that you use on your mm -hmm. PC where you take like a 3D model and then you translate it into instructions for the printer to follow. And these instructions usually are very simple. It's like, move the printer head here, move it up here, start laying down plastic here, stop here, move the head here, like a very mm -hmm. simple mm -hmm. instructions. There's no mm -hmm. feedback loop for the printer to verify that the head's even in the right place. So it kind of just like follows the instructions and and assumes that wherever it has gone, it it's correct. And um, unfortunately, that means that if the belts slip or if the printer head is loose or if the wheels are loose or if anything isn't put perfectly right, it doesn't know and it has no way to enact mm -hmm. on that at all. Mm -hmm. So like the there were a couple of, of times where the printer head, which is this little itty bitty 0.4 millimeter nozzle that is heated up to 200 degrees Celsius, just like slams into the print bed because it thought it wasn't low enough. And the, the print bed is glass, by the way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Oof. Uh, a lot of them, Oof, not the great. so yeah, you can, that's you most can buy a lot of it? like flexible beds. I don't think a lot can, of them are glass. You, there, yeah. there are many uh, assortments, but like glass is I guess typically so. going to have a bit better of longevity because for the most part, you're not going to be wrecking it up unless you keep ramming your print nozzle into it. Anyway, so that's one of the things it can do. The other thing is that if it thinks it's always in the correct location, if it slips on the timing belt, it doesn't know. So what has happened the last, oh, oh, no. they are toothed on one no. side. Does it use a uh, smooth belt belts or But only one belts? side. Mm -hmm. So okay. um, what has happened the last four prints? Right. We've, we've been trying to print uh, some insert trays for Arkham Horror because we have Arkham Horror, the new edition of it, plus a couple of expansions for it. And if you didn't know, there are a lot of tokens and pieces and, and just, shit everywhere and the box is just a box there's literally nothing in it to hold on to mm -hmm. the various bits so we've been printing all these inserts we got like three of them they were fine they turned out perfect actually but this other one that we've been trying to print this week has been a ride like you'll you'll go like three hours into it it's laid down like a solid seven layers of plastic. Like the whole bottom of the tray is already printed. It's trying to print the infill and it'll just mm -hmm. like the belt will just skip. The belt will just skip. And and so <laughs> I've come downstairs a couple of times oh, no. to 
like, uh, I'm going to say like three millimeters of perfectly laid down plastic. And then two layers on top of that were just shifted over so that they were printing in the middle of the air. And it was just like, there's nothing you can do. You just have to stop it, wait for it to cool down, peel it off, and then try it again. Like you can't salvage... You can't salvage a print gone wrong. You can't like separate oh, no. the bad layers from the good layers and try and resume it. Like it, there's nothing you can do at all. It's not salvageable. So it's just it's been this huge waste right. of materials. I've been trying like to rack my brains around like okay, something's clearly not right. Um, so we've done a couple of things this week. We've uh, done a mild tear down and tightened down like all of the screws, all the bolts on the bed. The bed was actually loose. So that was one. Uh, number two was the print head itself was loose. There's an eccentric nut in the back that you can't, you can't see it. So it doesn't look like it's something that you can adjust unless you go looking for it. But there is one of three wheels was very, very loose and it was causing right. the auto bed leveling to basically mm-hmm. give the wrong idea. So if you ever watch the auto bed leveling of this printer specifically, it basically picks 16 spots on the bed and it goes double tap, moves to the next spot, double tap. And and this is how it's supposed to figure out uh, if the head is A, in the right position and B, if the bed is level or at least to get an idea of what level is to the printer, right. <laughs> which is normally great if everything was put together right. But because mm-hmm. the head was loose when it was double tapping the bed, it was, it wasn't actually double tapping. It was like double tapping but too low. So it would it would basically self calibrate, thinking that well, I right. I am not I'm not touching the bed hard enough because the head is too loose. So it kind of it calibrated itself to be too low first of all. So it was doing this thing where it was like running into old layers of plastic and causing a lot of drag. That was. So that was another one, oh. um, and because the, ah. the print head was loose, the three wheels that are on the track on the gantry, those wheels were like rubbing themselves dry. Jeez. Basically, they were like shaving pieces of themselves oh off God. as they were running back and forth on the gantry. So there's been a lot of like damage control aside from the Holy fact shit. that we've been troubleshooting this particular model. We don't know why this model has been giving it oh. so much trouble. But we've had so many yeah, offsets. Interesting. I was gonna say, like, are there any alternatives to the model you're trying to print? So um, there are a couple ways to address it. First is just check your machine to make sure that it's put together right. Like the the belts do need to be tightened every so often because it's a it's a moving piece. It gets loose over time. That's fine. Right. But uh, the thing that made the biggest difference is that you can control your print speed in various like parts of the printing. So there's when the head is actually laying down plastic, sure. it moves at a certain speed. When it is not putting down plastic but traveling to a new location to start printing, that's a different speed. Um and then, you know, when it's actually tracing along walls, that's a different speed. So if you nudge uh travel speed or if you nudge like print speed a little bit, that's usually something that you do to control if you're getting like really stringy plastic or if you're getting Um, a lot of drag between like when it stops printing and when it starts. But in this case, uh, just changing the travel speed of the head so it wasn't trying to zip around as fast, that's pretty much what did this one. So we kind of knew going into this (laughs) hobby that it's a a very Mm. like fiddly hobby, kind of like cars, Angelo. Uh, But, you know, I, I don't think I expected quite so many like, really odd you got to get into the slicing to really nudge around a couple of parameters like some days i feel like i'm almost programming inside a different programming language of another programming language oh absolutely Mm. (laughs) yep Yep. that is pain i mean before handles all the 3d printing (laughs) printing Printling. Printling. Printing. I mean, so I don't really have to think about it, but I know that it, it, while like all things that are simple, it just like, it's probably finicky in ways that I just don't really know about. But it does make sense that all the instructions are basically there. All the simple stuff is as simple as it gets, but whenever something goes wrong in those scenarios, it always goes like, you know, 
just catastrophic. Absolutely. Wrong. Like like at least filament isn't usually expensive or whatever, thankfully, but it's still just a waste of time because like Bayforce had prints going on for like yeah. two days before. I'm like, there are so there like are many horror up. stories on Reddit about people just like waking up so, to a print that was perfectly fine when they went to bed. But they wake up and it's just it's an explosion of plastic spaghetti. And it's awful because there's nothing you can do about it. Yeah. And sometimes, like, it's as finicky as, uh, like, the ambient temperature having changed overnight or it's in the garage instead of in the house or some other thing. And, you know, we're not quite (laughs) at levels of I wanted to download and print a car yet. But when we finally get there... It's because someone will have worked on all the finicky bits and you can finally print a perfect replica of a Ferrari or some other supercar only for it to completely explode when you first turn on the engine. (laughs) If you want to take it one step at a time, Nancy, do you think you Well, it depends. Can I print an entire Metobicane caddy caddy for myself later? No. (laughs) Well, maybe. But what I need... Is is a little shim for my carburetor. It would basically be a uh, a little cylinder. Someone would have to design it first. Uh, with an inner one diameter, millimeter takes and then a surprisingly long amount of time to walls. print. I printed something with um. So the nozzle I mentioned earlier is a 0.4 millimeter yeah. nozzle. So if you imagine laying that down like 0.1 millimeter layers of plastic at a time, and then doubling it ish to make it like a millimeter thick walls and then eventually building this cylinder it's probably not a lot of time but when you when you think about the amount of nozzle travel it's actually a lot Hmm. but i mean if you want to model something for me i can get you something in a pla lot. we do not print an abs we do not print an abs in 3d so, yeah it can't be 2d angelo yeah, okay. Uh, I mean, I'm using the material from a, a, a bottle of Coke right now. I mean, it depends. So I like, don't operating think it has to be particularly wise, uh, Because special. ABS is universally recognized as like the most, like one of the most durable mm-hmm. plastics. That's why they make shine-free keycaps. PLA and, uh, is... PLA is... Well, A, it's organically created. Like, like it's, said, it's a plastic you make with organic uh, materials. Like it's not very petroleum-based. Which is what most of our strong mm-hmm. plastics are made out of. Uh, oh, PLA is apparently mm-hmm. actually uh, sure, sure, sure. biodegradable over PLA. time if you treat it properly. Because of that, but we don't have that all set yes. up. So wow. currently, our failed prints are just sitting around for us to shake our heads at. Mm-hmm. I actually, okay. not related to your 3D printing, but I actually, I think I have one or two friends that actually do 3D modeling, and I need to ask them for something, because I need, I need to fabricate something in 3D, but I don't know how. But yeah, Angelo, so if you think you want to try this with PLA, I'd be more than happy to, but you will have to provide the STL file. Okay, I'll have to figure out how to do that. That might but work. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to try to use gasket tape? paper instead. Uh, plumber's tape. Yeah. I don't think would be the good tr- the good stuff. Actually, wait, wait, no, electrical gasket tape paper is better. And plumber's tape might My be the God. answer. Actually, all right. Electrical tape. I feel like it gets gummy, and it doesn't. Uh, like plumber's tape actually might be good because it's not sticky. It just you you just build up a layer of. I hate to be that person, but I think we have gone too far into the yeah, person like, on the personal side, and we're gonna. Someone's we should gonna just have trail off with of us this. talking oh. about stuff. <laughs> so. and then at some point, Jay just goes, "All right, thanks everyone for listening." Hey, look, Nancy just All said, right. it. "All right, thanks have, everyone for take listening. care, guys." Have good, a good night, one. everybody. <laughs> this is Angelo signing out. Good night, everyone. Thanks for having me.